This little bundle of pixels represents the future of navigation on Android phones. See, Android software keys have been basically unchanged for more than seven years at this point, dating all the way back to the Android 3.0 Honeycomb release. But Google knows that in order to win over iPhone converts in the future, it'll have to deal with years of gesture muscle memory from the iPhone X and its successors. So that's where this new gesture toting home button comes in. This is new in the upcoming Android P release, though to get it on the current beta version you do need to enable it in the gestures menu, it's not switched on by default yet. First and foremost, it's still a home button. You can tap it to go home, or long press to fire up Google Assistant. That is where the similarities end. The new navigation bar in Android P does away with the tried and true back, home and recents configuration that we've known since 2011. Even the back key is now hidden if it's not needed. From now on, you'll be pulling, swiping and snapping back and forth on the home key to jump between application. And what Google has built out here is actually really fluid and usable, especially if you're juggling a lot of open apps. A quick swipe up sends you to the new overview screen, which is Android P's replacement for the old recent apps Rolodex. It scrolls horizontally, not vertically, which means you now swipe up to dismiss apps or down to make them full screen. Down below, Android shows you shortcut icons for five apps that it thinks you might want to use next based on your usage patterns. And if you think this looks suspiciously like an extension of the home screen launcher, then you'd be right. In fact, a second swipe up will take you right to the app drawer. This also means you need to swipe up slightly longer to get to the app drawer from your home screens, because a shorter swipe up, even from the launcher, always takes you to the overview screen. One of my favourite shortcuts on current versions of Android is the quick double tap on the Recents key to hop between the last two opened apps. The Recents key is gone now, but in Android P you can still use this shortcut with a quick swipe right on the Home key. That's because when you pull the Home button right without releasing, it turns into a kind of scroll wheel that lets you track left or right to navigate through your open apps. You can do this from any app, not just from the overview screen, and it's a super convenient way to scroll through lots of apps without excessive swiping on the screen. You can quickly scroll back and forth and there's some nice haptic feedback as you click past each app. Android's new gesture system for app switching is fluid, intuitive and has obviously been given a lot of thought, but for my money there's still one really obvious gesture missing. In the current preview build of Android P there's no gesture for back, that's still an old fashioned on screen key that pops up when it's needed. Most of the time this gives the navigation bar a weird asymmetry that seems at odds with what Google's trying to build here and I'm not sure why a simple swipe left gesture to go back hasn't been included. Anyway, let's go briefly back to that overview screen, because there are a few hidden features here that are worth highlighting. From the app switcher, you can actually highlight text or images in any app, even text from labels and menus that you wouldn't be able to highlight from within the app proper. And once highlighted, you can copy, paste or share with other apps. With images, this is basically an extension of the screenshot function that Android has had for years, only without the hassle of cropping in after the fact. But for text, it's even more useful because you can easily select text and copy stuff that wouldn't be selectable in older Android versions. Oh, and if you're wondering where split screen mode has gone, then fear not, you can still get to it by tapping the app icon in overview. This is one of the few compromises of the new button layout since there's no easy way to jump straight into split screen mode anymore. Back on Oreo, of course, you could long press the recent key to split the screen immediately. As with everything in a pre-release version of Android, some of this can and probably will change between now and when Android P becomes final later this year. So it's possible we'll see new gestures to address some of the shortcomings here, as well as tweaks to what's currently there. To keep up to date, be sure to subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube and check out the site to find out how to get Android P on your phone right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.